Welcome to the Mythbusters After Show. Tonight's episode is Flights of Fantasy. First question, the U-2 spy plane. Oh my God, how did you guys pull that off? That was our amazing Mythbuster producers. Um, we have a great team of uh, associate producers who are the folks that find us the locations and get us the permits and work out all the details to allow us to do the crazy things we do all the time. And uh, a couple of them have been working on this on and off for a couple of years, working with the Air Force to get permission and make sure that they were comfortable with the kind of episode we wanted to shoot. And they finally said yes. Next question, was the training as intense as it looked? Pretty much. Yeah, it was pretty pretty intense. Yeah, it was, I didn't go up in the plane, but I believe it, the training was more intense than going up in the plane. Oh, by far, and actually that suit is a lot harder to wear on the Earth's surface than it is once you're in the plane. So, you know, it takes five people to put that suit on, takes half an hour to put it on, half an hour to take it off. You gotta go through all the uh, compression and decompression. Go ahead and pull that green lanyard, use the mirror. Get that lanyard. Good, good. They go through all these really, really terrible worst case scenarios. As soon as you land like so, you're gonna break one of them. Something's broken. You know, it's funny, when you deal with industry, like everyone's always saying, ah, oh, it's totally safe, it's totally safe. In the military, they're like, it's mostly safe. The minute you look down is when the seat's gonna fire and you're probably gonna break your back. <laughs> yeah. I just say the night before the flight, I was like, just a little bit like, wow, there's some really bad stuff that could go on. Yeah, yeah. That is quite the dream, imagining falling down from 70,000 feet. Well, the, oh, <laughs> if you actually pull the eject handle at 70,000 feet, your chute doesn't open. No, 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 no. Because at 70,000 feet, it'll take you like hours to actually get to the Earth's surface and you will suffocate because you don't have enough oxygen attached to your chair to last that trip. So your chair has to fall until it's at about 15,000 feet, or you have to fall until you're about 15,000 feet. So you free fall after ejecting, for two and a half minutes before your chute opens. Two and a half minutes, you gotta sit there, like falling through the air, thinking, boy, I hope this chute opens because of its altimeter at the right moment. Yeah. Freaky. Next question. How come it was Adam that flew and not Jamie? After the Blue Angels, wasn't it Jamie's turn? It was Jamie's turn. It was, it was Jamie's turn. Jamie's graciousness. There you go. Adam really likes that sort of thing, and I would have you know, enjoyed it, and uh, that would have been, uh, that would have been a good thing, but he would have enjoyed it more. I, I, I have like six spacesuits in my collection. Not real spacesuits, but replica spacesuits. I've loved space and NASA and all that stuff forever, so it was like, it, it was very, he, he took one for the team on that one. Here we go, we are taking off. Oh man, that is a lot of horsepower. That's a, wow, we're already lifting. That's crazy! Whoa! Wow! Next question, not a question. Well done for not barfing. <laughs> Thanks. <sighs> Actually, there was no danger of barfing. It was a very, very smooth ride. Well, uh, when you took off, it looked like you were doing about, what was it, a 45 degree angle? Yeah, it was 45 degree angle, and we corkscrewed all the way to like 10,000 feet. Next question, was it weird to think that Felix Baumgartner was 50,000 feet higher than you were? <laughs> it's crazy, crazy, crazy high. There we are. Ladies and gentlemen, 70,000 feet. The sky was already dark where I was. And actually, I was twice as high as a commercial airliner. So we could see some commercial airliners flying at their full height from the plane, and they looked as far below me as they look above us when we're on the ground. And he was farther than that distance again. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> oh, and did I mention I'm wearing a pressurized spacesuit? Yeah. <laughs> Strapped to a rocket. This is not a bad way to spend your day. Next question. Landing was unbelievably gnarly. I'm surprised that they are allowed to do that. Well, those guys come and go that way hundreds and hundreds of times during yeah. their training. They practice constantly, constantly. And in order for the plane to have the lift that it does and the specific weight to body ratio that it does and to be able to hold all of the sensing equipment that it needs to, they don't have room for more landing gear than that. Yeah, and that's pretty much the myth, you know, the, that truly is a very difficult plane to fly. Next question, I was hooked on this story. It was filmed in a great way and was really interesting, but the hardest plane to fly in the world? You serious? 
Well, I think we did point out that it's not like we went out and tried every other plane or every other reputedly difficult plane to fly to know whether this was the most difficult one to fly in the world. But um, as we said on the show, given all of the factors... Uh, Space suit, the fact that only 950 some odd pilots have certified to fly it in its 65 year history, uh, the fact that it lands on two wheels, the fact that you have to have ground support to land it, uh, the extremely wide uh, wingspan and incredible amount of lift you get out of it, um, you know, we kept hearing from the pilots that there are some amazing pilots who just can't fly that plane. That it is really, really, uh, it is a real challenge. Next question, drone disaster. How did you get so many multi-rotors to test? Well, I mean, there was only two methods. We could have either paid for them or someone gave them to us. Luckily, it was the second option. <laughs> somebody gave them to us, somebody you reached out to. Yes, Hobby King. They're one of the larger distributors of this type of product. They've got just about everything that you could want. And, uh, and so uh, they, they were, were very generous. Yeah. Next question, how long did it take to learn to fly these? I spent about 10 minutes flying to, to learn that I'm not very good at flying drones. So Mr. Jamie, with his years of effects experience and RC controllers, did much of the flying. Yeah, I uh, I was surprised how easy it was to pick it up because they, they really have come a long way with the electronics. Yeah. You can, if you have the right setting on those things, you can say, you know, use the GPS to hold this particular height. What you may not know is, um, given that we were doing a lot of our testing inside a building, uh, that inhibited that GPS sort of stabilization. And so oh. we couldn't use it. Uh, in fact, it was, while it did work in there, uh, the problem was that it was intermittent, and so you would uh, get lulled into a sense of uh, false you know, security. Yeah, because you'd be hovering along like you know, mm -hmm. pretty as you please, and uh, and then all of a sudden, it would do things that you didn't tell it to do. Right. It's going right for me. Why did the specialist camera guy Duncan fly the big octocopter for the finale? Um, well, Duncan flew that copter because that is. Uh, basically the exact same make and model of copter that Duncan flies to get our extra camera shots. He is absolutely an expert at flying that device. Yeah, and those things are scary. They're, you They're know... Terrifying. That was a little different than the smaller ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was genuinely dangerous. So we wanted it in the hands of someone who was really experienced at flying it. Next question. Seriously, do you think people will really make deliveries by drone in the future? No, I don't think so. I, I, I can't see it. I, I, it scares me. That kind of future where things are flying autonomously and delivering stuff, I, I find that really kind of scary. I mean, maybe it's inevitable, but I don't like it. Yeah, you know, I, 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 it, it's interesting that it would be possible, certainly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, oh, whether it actually comes into play or not, I'm not so sure. Whether it's desirable. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, it, when you start to go into the details, though, like how much does it cost to send a driver out in a truck? Oh, yeah, and, it's a significant you know, savings. It might be. Might be, yeah. Um, so I don't like the idea of skies filling. Mm, it's just... That's, uh, gives me the willies. <laughs> Next question. Why did you use blue blood? We used blue blood because... We didn't want to be overly gruesome by using red blood, and blue blood tells the same story... Nice. ...without being overly gruesome. So in order to be able to be nice and gory without worrying that, you know, maybe some young kids who watch might get disturbed, we made the blood blue. All right, could someone give me a Band-Aid? And I kept saying Vulcan blood, but apparently Vulcan blood is, is green, not blue. So I was getting that fact wrong. Should have been an aristocrat. Blue blood, yeah, exactly. There you go. Nice. Last question. All is, right. Is it true that you guys worked on Top Gun? Uh, it is true that this... You worked on Top Gun, no. right? No, it's not true. We have a Top Gun plane in the in the building, right? We have a bunch of Top Gun stuff. We've got the original molds right. and, uh, and the whole nine yards. But 
Uh, we've That's because all, the shop that you bought from Colossal Pictures was the shop that did the effects for Top Gun, right? Well, there's yeah, there's a lot of history here in this shop. The the people that work here or had worked here, where it came from, and all that. Have we have uh, leftovers from you know dozens of different movies that we didn't actually work on. And that was one of them. That was before I even got into special effects. But my ex-partner, uh, when we formed M5, and ran that job. Mm -hmm. And so that's you know, that's where we got all that stuff, as well as a lot of the machining tools and other things that we have come from uh, those days. Yeah, so myth busted plus facts. Yes. Well, <laughs> that's it for tonight's after show. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. See you next week, guys.